I want to talk with you about what happens after the brewer brews that great beer and it's delivered out to the retailers, but then it gets poured through dirty beer lines. I'm going to go through the process of cleaning draft beer lines and maintaining a draft beer system outside of the brewery. Now, I know a lot of you have dispense systems inside your brew pub or brewery, and this information can apply to those situations as well. Cleaning is a critical step in the brewing process, and there are specific chemicals used at the brewery. The purity of the beer that's filled in the keg is the best of the brewer's art, but the importance of clean equipment and lines at the brewery quite often doesn't get transferred out to the line cleaning industry and even into the beer distributors. Unfortunately, it's pretty much of a crapshoot once you get away from the brewery as to how the lines are cleaned, the methods and, and processes, and that's what this presentation's about. Cleaning for beer spoilers that build up and destroy beer flavors and ultimately profits. You might not be aware of all the things that can grow inside of the beer line and inside of a vessel. There are a few of them listed here on the slide. Bacteria, yeast, mold, and beer stone. These are the things we're cleaning for that create off tastes that reduce beer sales and therefore profits. I want to tell you a real case scenario. I own a line cleaning business, and here's an experience that happened to me right in the town that I live in. I had a restaurant customer who was selling 40 to 50 kegs a week when he first opened, but after about five years, his draft beer sales had dropped off to 12 or 14 kegs a week. Now, a unique aspect about this situation is that the retailer also sells about 100 different bottled beers, and over that same period of time, the bottled beer sales basically stayed the same and followed his normal trends, but the draft beer sales fell off. Well, I went in and gave the manager a demonstration on line cleaning. And while I was using a line cleaning pump to circulate chemicals through the lines, the buildup from the lines clogged the suction side of the pump seven times. Well, after that demonstration, my business took over the line cleaning for the restaurant, and within three months, the retailer started to notice an increase in the sales of draft beer. And within a year, he'd gotten back to selling 45 to 50 kegs a week. Now, this is a great example of how much line cleaning can affect the sales side of the equation. Quality line cleaning requires effective line cleaning chemicals. One chemical is alkaline for removing organic contaminants and has a high pH value. The other chemical is acid-based for removing inorganic contaminants and it has a low pH value. Cleaning chemicals are the first component in the cleaning process. In addition, you need the right cleaning equipment and a proven cleaning process for effective line cleaning. There are basically two processes currently used in the industry that are acceptable, but we'll talk about those more in a few minutes. There are three primary chemicals used in the cleaning industry. Potassium hydroxide is a very common choice, but sodium hydroxide is the preferred chemical for the alkaline side of line cleaning. Phosphoric acid is the choice for the acid side of cleaning. Of course, it's very important to follow all the label directions on these chemicals. They're very hazardous, just like the chemicals used at the brew house, so it's extremely important to pay attention to safety measures when you're cleaning. Surfactants are added to chemicals to reduce surface tension and also increase the chemical's cleaning ability. On this slide are pictures of how chemicals are affected by different surfactants. The first one on the left is just a bead of water with no surfactants. Chemists measure surface tension in dynes, which is a unit of force, whether the liquid will bead up on the surface or flow out over the surface. The goal is to reduce surface tension in a cleaning liquid in order to improve its ability to clean. The pictures on this slide are of surfactants that have been added to caustic soda. When the bead spreads out more over the surface, that improves the cleaner's rinseability and wettability. This same reaction is true with line cleaning chemicals. Surfactants are added to those chemicals to make them work better. The surfactant allows the cleaner to get into cracks and crevices while also allowing it to rinse out better. The process for cleaning a direct draw beer system is very different than for cleaning a long draw system. This slide shows very common equipment that's used out in our trade. The one on the left uses hand pressure to pump the solution through the beer line. Now this is good for home kegerators. The three pots on the right are pressurized by using the same CO2 source used to pressurize the keg. All four are only for use in cleaning a direct draw system. For those of you who aren't familiar with what I mean by direct draw, 
It's a system where the keg is in very close proximity to the dispense point, and that's generally within six feet. These units are what's usually referred to as static or pot cleaning in the industry. Here's the simple process of how pressurized direct draw cleaning is done. Basically, you have a pot that contains chemical mixed with water. We usually recommend a 3% caustic mix for cleaning, and then we usually would rinse with the same amount of water. For example, if we're going to clean with a 5-gallon pot, we would fill the container with a 5-gallon mixture, cleaner, and water. Then all 5 gallons would be allowed to fill the beer line by simply opening the faucet. Then close the faucet and allow the cleaning solution to soak in the line for 20 minutes. Then do the same thing with 5 gallons of clean water. We want to make sure that we get the chemical completely rinsed out of the line, so pH paper is recommended. You should use the pH paper to test for the alkalinity of both the chemical and the rinse water. It's very important to make sure that you have the chemical completely removed from the beer line. What's becoming popular with the cleaning chemicals that we use in the draft line business is that manufacturers are coloring them now to let you see if they're rinsed out of the line. The next cleaning process is for long draw beer systems, and these are systems of 25 feet or more. Many of you probably have a long draw system at the brewery, and these are very common out in the trade. Understanding this process is very important for those of you who are responsible for cleaning, either at your brewery or out in the trade. In some states, by law, the beer distributors and the brewers can clean lines. If you're responsible for cleaning, you really need to invest in a line cleaning pump. It's unbelievable how much more effective a line cleaning pump is compared with static cleaning or simply allowing the chemical to soak in the line. All long draw systems should be cleaned with a recirculating system using a pump and it should be for at least 15 minutes of contact time with the beer line. Beer systems should be cleaned at a minimum every 14 days. Now there's some thought going around the industry that suggests that we can stretch that out longer because we have more stainless steel in beer systems and we have improved beer line material. But the bottom line is 14 days is the proven recommended time frame and adhering to that is very, very critical. Now let's go through the three-step cleaning process. The first step is to flush the beer from the lines with water. You're just pumping all the beer in the lines down the drain. The second step is to clean the lines with approved line cleaning chemicals using recirculation. Again, we want a minimum of 15 minutes of contact time. And finally, the third step is to flush the chemicals out of the line with water and to use pH paper to test for neutral and to ensure that all the chemicals have been completely eliminated. Let's go through the process step by step. Step A is to flush all the beer from the lines with water. You can see in this slide that we have the line cleaning machine hooked up to one sink filled with fresh water. This step flushes all the beer out of the system and having the lines filled with water also gives us a neutral starting point to clean with the chemical. Step B is the chemical recirculation. The line cleaning chemical is now introduced into the sink. Mix the chemical with the water to a 3% solution. Then put both the pump intake hose and the line out hose into the sink and turn on the cleaning pump. The cleaner is circulated through the whole system and it returns back to the same sink that we're drawing from. And you'll know that's happening when you see the blue dye in the return line. And remember, 15 minutes of contact time is absolutely critical. It's also important to note that when you clean with the machine, you're actually hooking up to the shanks in the beer tower, so the faucets have to be removed. Each time you clean the system, the faucet should be cleaned too. Disassemble the faucets and allow them to soak in the chemical solution. Then rinse each faucet and brush it clean. It's easy to do this during the time the machine is circulating the cleaning solution. Step C is rinsing the chemicals out of the lines. Drain the sink and rinse out any chemical residue and then fill the sink with fresh water. Traditionally, if you circulate the cleaning solution for 15 minutes, you want to rinse for 15 minutes as well. 15 minutes will result in the maximum biological removal. You should finish by testing with pH paper to make sure you're back to the pH of water, which is 7 or neutral. You need to be sure there's no residual chemical to contaminate the beer and endanger the customer. 
Fobs are becoming standard equipment in long draw beer systems. If you don't know what a fob is, it shuts down a beer line when the keg empties so that the empty line doesn't fill up with gas. And this avoids the two, three, four pitchers of foam in between emptying the keg and retapping the new one. When fobs are present, there's a process that needs to be followed when you're cleaning the beer system. Make sure the fobs are in the bypass mode. Then when the cleaning solution is circulating in the beer line, Go back to the cooler and vent the fob. That will allow it to fill completely with cleaning solution. It's also important that the fobs be disassembled every three to six months for thorough cleaning. The one pictured here is a stainless steel fob. Stainless steel is a preferred material in the brewing industry because it's easier to clean and it's a lot less susceptible for bacteria to build up. But there is a lot of surface area on the fob and it'll eventually start to build up bacteria inside of it. To clean the fob, you need to disassemble it. Now here's a word of caution about disassembling and cleaning. The inside of the fob must be cleaned with a rag. Do not use a brush on it. A brush will rough up the surface of the glass and that can create a place for bacteria to grow. Use the caustic soda solution on a rag and just wipe clean the inside of the fob. This should be done every three months for plastic fobs and every six months for stainless steel fobs. The most important thing with line cleaning is safety. Always be sure to follow the directions on the bottle label and always wear safety glasses and gloves. If you've worked with caustic soda in the brewery, you know what it can do to your hands and skin. So remember, gloves are an absolute must. Always add the chemical cleaner to the water and not the reverse, because if you add water to the chemical, the water could splash chemical on you. Always use pH paper. The paper is an inexpensive way to know that the cleaning solution is at the proper strength and more importantly that it's rinsed out of the system. Measure the chemical solution and the rinse water with pH paper. Always keep the cap on the bottle to prevent spills and always work with the chemicals on the floor, not on the bar top. You want to make sure that you set the bottle on the floor so there's no chance that you or your staff can knock it over. And finally, always rinse with fresh water. I've seen line cleaners and service people in the industry rinsing with beer, but that exposes the customer to the possibility of having chemicals mixed in their beer, and obviously it's very important that we avoid that. The most important reason for line cleaning is that your customers will taste the difference. Effective line cleaning is using a standardized process, the proper equipment, and industry-approved chemicals. This will ensure that the taste of the beer can be enjoyed the way the brewmaster intended, and that's really the most important thing. Our goal is to make sure that the beer that goes into the barrel comes out of the faucets the same way. Customers will taste the difference, and you'll see it in sales and profits. There's a lot more information available at Micromatic.com. Just click on the Learn tab, and there you can choose videos to watch at Micromatic TV, or you can read white paper articles. Draft beer quality, from keg to glass.